Hello everyone, welcome to the stream. Today we will continue work on the Glasgow Digital Interface Explorer. And last week we worked on the USB-C connector and we will continue a little bit work on that. But before we start, uh, let me do a short recap and uh, show you what the Glasgow is really quick for those that are new to this stream. Uh, so Glasgow is this, uh, this device here. It is about, this is about the size of a credit card. So uh, just, just to make it clear for people what the size comparison is. So this is a, this is a credit card sized object. This is from, this is a scraper soda spreader from our stencils. Great people there. Um, so yeah, uh, this is the size of Glasgow. So it has a little bit of a margin on all sides. So it's a little bit smaller than a credit card. And this thing is essentially a USB to X uh, converter. And the X is meant to be incredibly flexible. So you have 16, 16 pins that can uh, be set uh, individually as input or output. They can be level shifted to an arbitrary voltage that can be set uh, using um, um, volt, um, variable uh, voltage regulators. You have an ADC to monitor the, and the voltages. It's on a separate pin, but you can bind them together. And you can set pull-ups and pull-down resistors for each pin uh, using these uh, I.O. expanders. And you have those sockets here, which are not populated on this board, where you can um, uh, where you can uh, essentially uh, adjust the pull up and pull down voltage, which is an interesting solution. And yeah, so this is this is the board and uh, that we will continue working on now. There is a um, crowdfunding campaign uh, that we are getting ready for. Let's see if that works. There we go. There, I, I created some uh, hooks for the uh, chatbot so that um, you can uh, uh, see where where to find uh, the um, the pre-launch page for the project, uh, as well as uh, I think I created a few more. I should I should change the overlay on the stream to actually include what the commands are for the bot. But um, yeah, so uh, that is Glasgow. And uh, one thing I did before is uh, I forgot to mention that last uh, on the last stream. So I made this prototype out of uh, for the uh, connecting cables, flywires, out of um, um, very flexible, uh, what is it, uh, silicone wire. Um, but uh, Ergo 404, welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. That's interesting. I didn't hear the notification. Huh. Web audio. Alerts. Huh. Interesting. Something happened to the alerts. I don't hear them. So I will have to pay attention when you guys are. Uh, huh. OK. Anyways, let's get back to it. So uh, I also made a prototype out of um, ribbon cable. Um, so the final uh, cable that will come with the campaign uh, will be something in between the two. So it will be crimped cable using uh, uh, probably PVC insulated wire. This uh, rubbery stuff is too springing in my opinion. It does not work as well as it seems. Uh, also, you, it is very easy to create very weird kinks in the silicon wire. Uh, which make them look uh, very <laughs> abused very quickly. So um, there will be something in between, not the ribbon cable, but crimped and PVC insulated wire, which we will probably end up using for the campaign. So just, uh, just a recap here. Um, the interesting part uh, that this does is uh, actually not the hardware itself, it's the software. The hardware is meant to convert a hardware problem into a software problem. So uh, you have this Python framework where you can define uh, an arbitrary interface um, hardware block uh, 
and this will be generated on the fly and connected over USB. So this is the magic of this device. You need to connect to some weird um, um, digital interface, but uh, you want to do it at hardware speed, like hardware implementation speed and not bit bang it. Uh, this is the tool of choice. Also, it has some additional features for the standard protocols like UART. It uh, has pretty very good auto boarding <laughs> detection. Uh, for JTAG, it auto detects which pin is pin, which pin it has an applet for that, which makes it very powerful. And 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 so basically, because we have uh, we can design the hardware on the fly that to use on this because it has an FPGA, and we use the open source tools to synthesize a hardware block on the fly. Uh, it gives us opportunities which are very hard to accomplish with either fixed hardware device or with bit banging or with uh, an FPGA device that you can deploy. Yes, but yeah, uh, similar to JTAG later. Um, I'm not sure about. Uh, I am not 100% sure about the limitations. The problem, so for example, a problem with JTagulator is that it is using those bidirectional level shifters, uh, which are causing a lot of signal integrity issues. Um, and this device is using fixed direction controllable I.O. level shifters, so they are much more signal, like the signal integrity is much better on this device. Uh, so that's a hardware difference. Uh, software difference, it might be, I am not 100% sure about the power uh, pin detection part of uh, the equation. Uh, I would have to check on that. Um, so, uh, uh, but uh, yeah, it does. Yeah, it's it's all. There's always a trade-off, and um, Jtagulator is a great device. Though I heard a lot of people use it um, for this kind of, uh, but this this can do more than just be be a JTAG pin detector. Uh, that's that's the magic of the Glasgow. Um, so the I know uh, Greg Deville, for example, is using his J uh, Glasgow for. Um, uh, basically every UART he's using. So it's like a UART adapter. It's like, oh, it's just sitting on my desk and it's very easy to set up and use. So I'm using it for that. Oh, and also it can serve as a logic analyzer if you need to. Um, that functionality is currently limited to an uh, internal basically IO dump. Um, so uh, the support for SIGROC interfacing is currently not implemented yet because it was not on the top of the priority queue yet. Uh, but this this should be uh, possible to use this as a mid-range uh, logic analyzer, um, like uh, in the range of I don't know, uh, uh, maybe up to 100 megahertz uh, I/O speed. I don't know, something along those lines should be possible. But uh, don't quote me on that. Uh, I, but uh, the FPGA uh, should be able to do this, this kind of speeds. And yeah, and we have the LVDS connector, which is like an extra port. We can use it to interface to high speed differential signals. And that one does is just exposed pins of the FPGA. Um, so yeah, anyways. Uh, let me see where the status is. Let us see what the status is on the PCB. So since last week, I didn't get as much done on the PCB design as I wished. Uh, there was, uh, uh, there was uh, other stuff happening. Um, and I did not come around to do as much as I wanted. The only thing I I did really is um, is add the 3D model for the USB-C connector. So this is how it looks like now. So you, we have this USB-C connector on here that we added last week. And um, yeah, so that's uh, that's pretty much the only thing I did. Uh, so today we should. I have an idea how to improve the USB-C interfacing here. Uh, so we will probably work on that a little bit. 
and then uh, we can look at the silk screen how to include uh, so I think I have a um, sublime text yes yeah. so uh, we are not removing the attic footprint I will just leave it on there um, so that's one thing and uh, then uh, we want to add the text anchors for the uh, manufacturer logo and the manufacturer text uh, that's something I wanted to add but mainly uh, I will do some fixes here uh, around in this area uh, to make the routing a little bit cleaner I had a epiphany after the stream last week I would have done it uh, off uh, off stream but uh, as I said I didn't come around to it so now you can witness me futz around with some more traces <laughs> So, if you have questions regarding Glasgow, uh, go ahead, let me know. I'm happy to, uh, to answer any additional questions you might have. Um, yeah, uh, and uh, my thought was, so you see how the routing here is going to the bottom and to the, through the top. And the reason for that is, so what is this part? This part is a ESD protecting uh, protection diodes, but also it is an overcurrent protecting uh, uh, device. So this chip uh, is limiting the uh, current that is being drawn over USB to 500 milliamps, no matter what. The reason we definitely need that in uh, for the Glasgow is the fact that we are above 100 microfarad capacitance which would uh, over 100 uh, microfarads capacitance on a target device that is unprotected or unlimited uh, is uh, is violating the uh, standard uh, so uh, we uh, the solution for that is having this protection chip so uh, after i looked at the data sheets uh, of this, it turns out, I think we did that last week, it turns out this device is actually meant for the host side of things. So in a host you usually have this kind of a device that is limiting the current and also has a flag that it raises and says there was an overcurrent uh, uh, event, so computer I'm letting you know that I limited the current. Um, and so this way you get those messages it's like oh your device is uh, drawing too much current i disabled that device uh, on your computer and this is this kind of devices do do this job so yeah um, we put it on the target to limit the current and because we have the, a lot of capacitance on this device and we still also have something connected to it uh, so um, that is a good idea usually uh, anyways, so um, as you see, the USB-C connector uh, has the VBUS pins on both sides of the connector. Um, one thing I didn't manage to show you last week uh, is actually the USB connectors because I think the camera, oh yeah, the camera, this camera failed. Uh, but I can show you one thing just to, for reference. Um, because I thought about this. So my perception of USB-C, uh, let me get my other laptop. So my, my, my X1 Carbon here has a USB-C connector. Oh wait, where's the mouse there? So yeah, um, this one has two USB-C connectors and the thing I observed with this is when I plug this in, this is this is fairly wobbly. This is very wobbly action in here. It's like it has a huge amount of movement side to side. I, I was I have to say I'm not a huge fan of that. It feels incredibly sloppy uh, connection for USB-C. But it turns out the connectors from uh, LCSC that uh, we are we will be using and everyone seems to be using on projects for that have USB 2.0 they have very good action they are pretty stable 
Yeah, I've seen it on multiple devices. I have a charger also uh, from Anker, and it is also as wobbly. Uh, so uh, my so the, these these are much nicer. These have nice click, and they are not as wobbly, which is nice. So uh, and this is another of the grievances I had with uh, USB C uh, that I wanted to address, and it's actually much better in this. So I even got uh, some cables from Anker here, which are nice. And this is just 2.0, because uh, uh, I wanted to explore that. <laughs> this, this, is, this will be fun now, because now we will have three types of cables, or four even. We will have the power cables that are just for charging, which should be chopped up and thrown in the trash immediately. Uh, for USB-C, which we have for micro USB, but then we will have uh, USB 2.0 only cables, and then USB 3.0 cables, and USB 3.0 10 gigabit cables. So, yeah, great. This will be this will be a cable nightmare with USB-C that I'm seeing coming. So yeah, um, that's again rant about USB-C. It's like déjà vu or something. <laughs> All right. Anyway, so this is nice. Um, this USB-C connector is. Let me put it here. Uh, yeah, uh, it seems to be working fine. So yeah. All right. So um, let's get back to the PC desktop here and do some routing. So anyway, so we have those um, uh, VBus connections. And I realized we can connect to VBus also down here. What it will allow us to do is turn this part by 90 degrees to the left, connect to VBus down here, and then let these traces go up and down from, from top so we can straighten out uh, this routing so it doesn't go all the way through here but goes basically whoop in and out. So that's what I wanted to do. Uh, so I will probably just uh, remove the routing here. Um, and we will just reroute this uh, stuff again. I think that's the easiest way of doing it. I uh, don't, do I want to do the whole thing? Probably not. Track and this. So let's do this. I'm not sure. Uh, interesting. All right. Okay, so that's cleaned. Uh, yeah. Oh, right, I forgot to uh, get the, everyone should have a standard, yeah. And it's also, it's like, why are there 50 standards? Let's make another one. Now we have 51. Um, that is definitely not normal. It is definitely normal. It's uh, the, I, I checked on other, uh, um, other uh, Lenovo laptops, they all do that. And the Anker power, su uh, power supply brick has the same amount of wobble. So it is not, not weird or, or wrong. It is definitely a thing you find on devices that are like tested consumer devices that you have so much wobble. It's, uh, it's a thing. <laughs> um, so, um, yeah. Uh, just there we go. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, this mechanical, I'm pretty sure the mechanical, it is, it is by design uh, that it is so wobbly. I would assume the reason, the reasoning here is we want it to, um, 
to rather wobble than, uh, than to rip on the pads of the USB-C connector. That is the only explanation I can have. Uh, but uh, as a user, it does feel weird. Uh, so, yeah. Uh, how do I choose it so that I don't select the back? Oh. It's uh, B silk. Let's disable B silk. Will this work? Uh, control. Probably shift, right? Yes. Okay, do we have it? Let's move it. All right. Okay, so something like this. Right, so I need to, oh, I can go into the paths. That's nice. I can go into the paths. Uh, the VUSB thing, the VUSB thing, the VUSB, the USB, the USB. How do we get rid of it? And the VUSB we can route on the top too. Just wiggled. <laughs> USB-C connector. Yeah. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> everyone everyone wobble your USB-C cables. <laughs> right, okay. So yeah, let me delete this because I don't think we need that. I think we can go all around here and get to the USB. And then we can move this. Uh, I need to do something with this uh, CC, the CC. So let me think. So uh, V bus, V bus. So the CC, it should get out of the way. This is in the way here. Let's figure it out later. So let's move it out of the way. Um, Okay, so that, then we can put this capacitor probably to the side here, yes. I think it can go, so I'm already imagining where, how it will come together later. Something along these lines. Something like that. And then we still need this guy here. Let's move it. Okay. All right. Okay, so that's cleaned. Oh, I love this track. <laughs> uh, yeah, there we go. So the main question here now is USB-N, oh yeah. So the question here now is, can it fit above here? Some collective weekly. <laughs> like that. Uh, that's, uh, we need some wiggle memes. 
Okay, so this guy can be also connected up here, so that's nice. And then we have VUSB that goes in here. And we can probably get closer to here. I'm thinking, thinking, thinking. So let's move this fella. Right. So if we put it like this, can we make enough space for this to fit here? Probably we can. Something like that. We still need to move it so that the ground is not in the way. Yeah, so that looks good. Now let's see how the diff pair looks like. So route, uh, uh, interactive rotor, what is it? Uh, how are the diff, diff pair settings? Where are they? Pair dimensions. Use custom values. Width is 16, trace gap is 15. I think that's what it was. Yeah. So we can do this, essentially. And then I, I will re redo this. All I need to figure out is do we have enough space up here? Oh, and the crystal. Oh, I can move this. Haha. <laughs> I can move this up here to make space here so I can shove it up. So that's nice. We still need to keep this guy here. Uh, let's move the ground wire here. Whoa, I didn't mean to do that. There we go. It's the load capacitors. There we go. So this is, this will work. So we have space now, 150. And ground can be essentially connected up here. can do that with the thicker trace like this let's do that okay and then the CC actually can live next to here we don't need to route it Wow that cleans up things here Yeah, yeah, I will move you. Let's, don't worry about that. Something like this. And then we need the really thick one, right? Oh, this is too thick. This is too much. 450. Uh, not sure I like this. Like, let's do that this way. All right. And then this, the CC should get uh, 250 and connect it from here instead of the other side. So there we go. And then we can do the 15 and connect here. There we go. So that's cleaned up. That's nice. Uh, let's remove these. So 
So now the biggest question, do we want to go that far? I don't think we want to go too far here. Uh, da, 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 da. We can It would be nice to have it like all all the way up here from the looks of it, but I don't think this is the right thing to do because we still need to get through the trace up around. Uh, all right, yeah, and one more thing I forgot about. I should have uh, keyboard uh, info <laughs> running. So I mentioned that in the last stream. There we go. All right, so uh, projects OBS uh, tray keys. There we go. Let's start that. Keyboard. So yeah, we will still have the... I think I might have changed the, uh, the settings in the colors. So the coolest part about... Um, um, maybe this is not the right thing to do, wait. Let's do the old one, the, because this one is showing keys and not creating a marquee. Oh, Keymon is not installed? Interesting. Huh. Okay, well, it is, it is what it is. Uh... So, um, semi, -tra semi transparent. Okay, yeah. So, regarding the color theme, yes. So, you can click on every of these uh, colors and then you get this uh, adjustment. And I have it set to 75%. I guess that is not default. <laughs> uh, it might have become default, yeah. If you are using KiCad for quite a while and you are using the settings from an older version of KiCad. It might have carried over solid colors. Uh, I am pretty sure at some point I deleted all the local machine settings and let KiCad reload them from scratch for to the defaults. And I have the feeling this is a default, but it's a newer default. Yeah, because I definitely didn't adjust all of them. I don't remember at least doing it. So, um, so yeah, if you if you you can adjust them and set them to transparent. A cool thing that is coming up in the next version of KiCad version six is that you can export and load uh, color schemes. So people are already using the nightly build with really beautiful uh, color schemes. So um, get ready for that. It will be exciting. Um, so yeah. Oh, the clock IF, right, that's interesting. So let me just move it here because this, I will have to set it up in a better position. Something like that. And then we have these fellas, I just realized this. All right, so. So yeah. Clock IF kind of look good at a 45 degree angle. Yeah, I, 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 will, I will mess around with it. Yeah, you're probably right. I might put it here 45 degrees here. There's not really space in here. I just put it out of the way because it was definitely in the wrong spot. Uh, the Clock IF might actually wander back uh, more in the position where it was before. Um, interesting though. Wait, why is Clock IF... Do we have clock IF, uh, uh, clock ref? It's also just from the top. Hmm. 
They are not accessible from the bottom. That's sad. Shouldn't we have the clock IF also uh, um, available on the bottom for the pogo pin tester? Hmm. And the clock ref, same thing. Huh. It is not available on the back. Interesting. It's not a big deal because we already will have the this connector having to connect from the top to the board, but uh, the clock IF should be in the pogo pin tester. <laughs> Okie dokes. Anyways, um, let's try to get this sorted. So first of all, I do want it to be aligned with the uh, oscillator, so to make it pretty. Okay, move. I think it is. Uh, yep, it is. The second question is. Uh, how much space do we need here? Yeah, we don't. Huh. Right, so it should go lower, shouldn't it? Because it's going up and down in an unpleasant way. It can't do that, huh? So the diff, diff pair router is having issues here. So I think I do have to scoot it down more. Let's try this. Okay, so that's that. So first of all, I need to connect the like this, because that needs to be connected. And then negative, positive. Oh, right, 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 right. So negative goes here, positive goes here. So I connect it to P and N. So maybe what I need to do is go down here and then up, right? So it was Alt-6. That's I think the shortcut here. Uh, this and then uh, not having a much space here for the diff pair routing. Huh. Something like this. In such constrained spaces, it almost makes sense. There we go, that's better. So plus, so let's try with the plus first. There we go. I think that's good. Yeah, it will not uh, let me do that. Okay. Okay. So the rest, I think I have to route by hand. Biku, welcome. Let's see. Uh, Floor, welcome to the stream. Thank you for the follow. Uh, yeah, so let's do 
just normal routing here. Can yeah, yeah, yeah. I I hear you. <laughs> uh, let's do just B, and then route this trace here and this trace here, because that's what it is. It's not going all the way diff pair in here. But yeah, that looks good. I think that that is definitely a better routing than it was before, I think. Let's look at three. So you see the difference, Blonk? Yep. Uh, yeah, that is definitely cleaner. This guy can go in the center here. It will look better. But this is ground. Oh no, so this is this will stay here. Then we can have the CC, let's think. Uh, we do have enough space here to have them have them horizontal, have them vertical, I mean. But this will not be a Deal. I'm still trying to get around this ground pin here. I want to keep the pattern, the nice pattern of the um, landing pads here in the back. So yeah. I think that's fine. So let's do this. V-bus and ground. Let's me think, 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 think. Uh, yeah, so the 15 definitely goes here, so that should be easy. And then slash, come on, there we go. And ground should be connected so the ground is connected to an internal plane so it isn't a problem except this guy needs a ground connection so let's do that this is probably a 450 yep and then yeah and, and then we, now we have that marquee it's not ideal let me move this out of the way I know people don't like it, the marquee. So yeah, I have to not have the keyboard uh, presses uh, logged because that seems to be a little bit of a problem. Uh, Spyma was busy with the real life and uh, didn't come around and I didn't have time to fix this either. So it is what it is for now. Anyways, cool. Uh, can I move this? Yeah, that will be fine. This is moved. I'm not sure I like this. I want it to be centered. Uh, let's try doing this. This is still moving. Ah, that's annoying. How about moving this just a tad? Come on. There we go. That's better. It's a little bit of a zigzag, but we will be we will live with it, it's fine. Uh, and then we need VBus, so we need another 450 here. Like this, and then like this. Uh, I think I want it to go out and then go in. Then we have, uh, pa -pa 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 -pa, let me think. So this is the one micro V bus. <laughs> we could put this guy actually here. Yeah, totally. Yeah, totally. And then we can move the CC and the V bus. Let's see, let's clean this up. Come on, let's do this, uh, no, this and this, come on, select, 
then this, then move like this. Yeah, now nicely organized. Let's see if that works for us. This is connected to ground and we need a ground via here. Uh, that seems to be all right. Oh yeah, I need to fix the stuff on the <laughs> do do I need it exactly there? No, I do not. <laughs> but uh, it's just this pattern here um, that I have on the back for the uh, Pogo pin tester. Let me zoom out. Ah, uh, there we go. That's better. I wanted to keep it in a, some regular pattern here. That's all. It's not a really good reason. I could put it anywhere, really. Uh, but yeah, that should do the job, though. Like this. And then we can connect. something like that and then we can have also an additional one right here yep like this and then uh, the USB has to be connected around here this doesn't have to be this is just a signal on pin 1 as far as I remember uh, let's go into the schematic uh, I can just go like this. Come on, select the footprint, thank you. So pin one is enable, so it doesn't require to be any thick wire here. So we can do that with the 15. Just get around everything. There we go, like this. There we go. That should do the job. There we go. And now we can go also here. There we go, perfect. <laughs> yeah, it's just, just pure RCD. <laughs> There's no no good reason. There's just an, just bad reasons why why we want this clean to look nice. I want it to look nice, pretty pretty. All right, and then there we go. There we go. V bus, V bus. And then we need to connect this fella here, which is a chonker, this chonker here. There we go, the chonker is connected. Sweet, that's definitely an improvement. There we go. Nice, nice, nice. So the clock IF uh, thing needs to be moved. Uh, yeah, the question is, do we want the clock IF? Oh, I think the reason why I have to ask why the clock IF ended up on top. I think it is for testing to connect. Uh, 
Uh, how do I calculate? I don't know. This is, uh, I am just following the rules that Markham set. And uh, I think he selected the thickest reasonable width that makes sense here. <laughs> so uh, the longer the trays the w and c can carry some, some significant current, the wider you make it. But I'm sure you can calculate it. There is a calculator in, uh, in KiCad uh, that I never used, really. So there's this tool, which is a PCB calculator. You can calculate track width, temperature rise. So basically, you can calculate <clears throat> the resistivity of the trace. So it is something you can calculate. Uh, and you can say, um, 0.5 and then temperature rise that you are want to ally above above ambient and then conductor length how many millimeters uh, yeah yeah it is um, but yeah it's it's a very useful tool and then uh, um, uh, then you have also spacing for high uh, high voltage traces then you have transmission line for RF uh, and stuff like microstrip and coplanar uh, waveguide and coplanar with ground uh, so this is very this is super useful so this is uh, something you definitely would use if you do RF design and then um, RF attenuators, and then you have color codes for your uh, through-hole resistors. Uh, so that's nice. Yeah, anyways, so then you can have also uh, regulators to set uh, a voltage reference. Yeah, I, uh, yeah, check out the calculator. Uh, I think that's the, that's the way. Yeah, perfect. Good, good. Yeah, 45 will be totally fine. It will be chilly. Chilly, chilly. Okie dokes. Um, yeah, so we got that. I think that makes most sense here. Without... Uh, because if I move it higher, I will have to go around the VUSB stuff. Uh, this detour here is the shortest detour I can reasonably make. Unless I may, I could put this at 45 degrees, probably, and make it even cleaner a tad more. But that's uh, that's becoming, that's I think beyond reasonable. <laughs> so yeah. Um, So let me move this out of the way so that it is not completely squirrely. And then uh, I will save this and then uh, commit this change uh, before I move on to some silkscreen stuff. So we are at 149. So yeah, it took us, what, 40 minutes to do. It's not that bad. Where is it? There we go. Uh, so this is the diff. Oh, I disabled the silk screen. I can enable it again. Oh, e silk. There we go. Uh, B paste, F paste. It was already hidden, so yeah, that's fine. Uh, I'm not too um, OCD about the commits being 100% clean, especially with the churn, typical churn stuff like layers on and off that uh, happens. I wish this. Uh, yeah, to a certain degree, I wish these settings, like this, uh, which layers are enabled, wasn't really part of the PCB design file at all. I don't know. I have mixed, mixed, uh, mixed feelings about this being part of the file. 
because it does generate some churn on GitHub or in Git in general. Why is this guy here? Why is it not vertical? <laughs> Finding like st little details where I'm like, hmm, maybe we can clean this up. But yeah, it's not really worth it. It's fine. Okay, uh, clock IF, uh, yep, uh, git diff one last time. Uh, ref uh, C2, um, uh, what is this chip called? What is the name of this? Uh, what was it, control D or something? No. Oh, that was in the schematic, right? Oh, you can. Ha! Huh, this is this is what I really wish that KiCad transferred the custom uh, fields from uh, schematic to the board file, so that I can access this the the uh, data sheet of the part also from the design file. Uh, yeah. So D. Come on. Control D, I said, right? Or was it Control Shift D? One of them. Whatever, it's fine. Just open it this way. <laughs> there we go. Oh, just FYI, because I'm sure someone will ask, where did I get the uh, USB-C 3D model? Because I added that. Uh, it is on uh, GrabCat, so I will um, I will paste that in the chat for reference. Uh, the keycat, well, <laughs> it depends on which settings you are talking about. The settings for which layer is enabled and disabled is stored in the board file, uh, at the top of the file. So in theory, you could have a git filter pre-commit hook type of stuff that is preventing it from being changed or something. So yeah, uh, anyways, just wanted to share that this is where the uh, USB-C model is. So current limit switch. That's the part, okay, so current limit switch. Uh, Something like that. That should do it. Okie dokie. Now we can do some more cleanup of the silk screen. Uh, yeah, so we don't need. Yeah, so I want this to be connected here. Uh, clock ref. Just make a tri just make a line line. So something like this, and then. Something like this, maybe. Nope. Like this, and then we can do F silk, and then trace.
That should do it. I could just make a straight line here, but I think this looks nicer. Yeah. And there is a website, yeah, apropos, um, there is uh, Massaging your Git for KiCad. This uh, post contains a lot of uh, recommendations of uh, how to set up uh, filters so that uh, uh, you decrease the churn and you can do uh, visual diff and stuff like that. So um, this, is, this is a useful page. I need to sit down and implement some of that stuff eventually. Ah, wrong, <laughs> sorry. I reposted the same link. I meant to do this. Yeah, so uh, yeah, the, the, it might contain a bunch of good uh, recommendations. I should probably do that, set it up for my repository, figure out what I like, what I don't like, and maybe make my own blog post regarding this. So. Um, this is uh, this is something I was recommending to a few people. <clears throat> so I think that is do fine now. What we still need to do is make space for the manufactured by uh, string that I had up here, and then find a spot for a logo on the back. Uh, the one bit squared logo for the manufacturer and then put a placeholder in here for the future. But what we can do is fix this because this is uh, this is in the wrong spot. Now let's do this. Then we have this guy, which is too large, I think, is it? No, it is 0.4, so it is fine. We can move it up here. There we go. They are not aligned properly, are they? I just see it, that they are not aligned properly. They're off by like 0.5 millimeters. Oh no, they are off by 0.5 millimeters. That can stand. Why is it so weirdly off? <laughs> Who is off here? Ah, you are off. There we go. <laughs> now it's clean. <laughs> All righty. So I think we have everything in general set up so I can save this. Uh, I still need to do the, the text here. Copy this and to do, uh, oh man, what did I write on here? MFR dot by I did this this way and then should have enough space now here. And I think what I usually do is <laughs> have a placeholder like this. Manufactured by Null. So 
here you have your null pointer <laughs> to who made it. <laughs> so yeah, that's, uh, that's what I was thinking of doing here. So maybe I can have the MFR by string and then have this as a separate anchor. Um, I'm not 100% convinced how to do this yet. Uh, but yeah, this will go here. Um, and then on the back side, we will do the one bit squared logo or the placeholder for a company logo if someone else is manufacturing it. Uh, so that it is clear who made what. And then we will have the last to do item done. But I need a very short break and I'll be right back. So don't run away. And I see you in a few minutes. So let's see. All right, I'm back. Sorry about that. Okay, so let's uh, continue on the silkscreen finalization here. Mm. Uh, I do think, so I might be doing some more cleanups here, probably adding more sectioning here to make it a little bit more consistent. Uh, so, for example, you see the VRAG, uh, the startup circuitry, so the sequencing chip, um, doesn't have a section. Uh, should be like PWR sec uh, in here, SEQ maybe. So um, let's call that this way. Duplicate and then. Uh, Oh, that does actually fit nicely here. That's good. And then we can uh, just draw it on the silk screen. Are you serious? This is not, there we go. <laughs> that was weird. Like this. Oh, I think I know what's going on. So I switched to uh, graphics card accelerated um, 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 
video encoding. And I think KiCat is contenting for the graphics card. I think that's what's going on. That's why it is so choppy. So weirdly choppy. Interesting. I need a better graphics card. <laughs> so this decreased the CPU usage by a lot. Uh, so thanks, thanks Sylvain for pointing this out that I can switch it on. And um, so the computer is like not whirring so loudly and whatnot, but KiCat is being a little bit more choppy because of it. Because it is also using the graphics card to accelerate the graphics. So I would assume there is some contention happening here. Anyway, so let's see how that looks. Uh, it should go to the left a little bit more. More centered and then down. There we go. Yep. Let's uh, open the data sheet just for the fun of it. That's how they're calling it. Yeah, power sequencer. Haha, -ha, I did I did have the right term in my mind. Good. <laughs> I was not sure about this. So yeah, it's a power sequencer. So we want to make sure that um, um, that the order, uh, the 1.2 volt uh, rail goes on first, then 3.3 volt rail, and then the uh, Cypress chip powers on. So we make sure that it is uh, powering on. And this is monitoring the power good on the 5 volt input. So when the power in 5 volt is good, then it starts uh, sequencing these. Yeah. Cool. Sweet. Uh, so that's noted. And then the flash memory. I think this should get a, a rectangle or something by itself. I think it will be good enough if we... What? No. <laughs> that's not what I wanted. <laughs> Let's not uh, make it with traces. There we go. Something like that should do it. There we go. Like this. And then SCL. Uh, you can't really. It has to be like this, probably. Yeah, so that's. Or maybe higher, sorry. Move. Like this. That should do the job. What? Why are you being jerk? There we go. That's better. That should be fine. So let's save that. Let's look at the yeah, that's, that's definitely looking slightly better. It got their own courtyards or like uh, their own sections. The level shifters look fine. Yeah, I'm, I, I'm not sure how far I will go with the legends for all the blocks, but um, yeah. So MFR by and then have the text here. Will that fit? Nope. There we go. Let's do the following. 
like this. And then duplicate. Something like that. Okay, so it is to the left. What the? Oh, right. Uh, move. Think like this, and then. In this case, it would be one bit squared. Will that fit? It does fit, so that's good. And I think we can move this whole thing if we want to add an additional designer to the list here. So this is this might still be an option. So let's call it null for now. And now backside, backside, page down. Let's see, shift Z, shift Z, and then rotate. Okay, so where do we put the one bit squared logo or whatever company logo? I think this is the section that is free. This is the free section. Um, let's think, think, think. Yeah, let's try to put it here. Right, I don't think I have the footprints. I don't think I have the PKL logos. Oh, I do, interesting. PKL logos are here, so that's good. Uh, let's see, five millimeter. Let's flip it. Rotate. So let me remove the front and remove the front silk and front fab. Let's do just back fab and then courtyard, back courtyard. Curious what that is coming from. has to have to, something to do with the old USB connector. Mm -hmm. So the text would be also copied. This uh, would definitely, oh, this should be centered. Uh, should be center, there we go. Something like that. And then um, manufactured by should go above. Okay, so on three, let's see how that looks. It should go lower, definitely lower. Yeah, so let's move this shift click, shift click, and then move. It's hard to see what like the good uh, positional relationship is here. So first of all, I want to disable these. <laughs> they are useless. All right. Let's see. How does this look? And then, mm, yeah. 
think that looks okay. What do you guys think? Also, another thing I we might want to do is to make this legend for the pins a little bit more flashy. Although this is very functional. Should we mark the NCs as NCs? Will that be helpful in any shape or form? Uh, so yeah, someone uh, someone asked, so I think it was Sylvain actually again, uh, that it would be nice to number which uh, pin is which on the top of the board. But that's that seems pretty hard to do. Uh, the only thing I can imagine is adding numbers here on the edge of the board. Uh, the NC markings, yeah. I will add that as a separate commit, I think, the NC markers, because that might be something uh, people will take offense with for reasons. Yeah, so that's looking good. Okay. Um, Right, regarding the numbers on the front of the board, the only thing I can do, I think, is marking them on the edge here. Here on the inside, I don't really have space to add text anymore. There's already the large B and there's the reference uh, pads. We could move them though. They don't really have to be here. But this might be, let's try it. So I, oh, the other thing I wanted to test is replace this with a bigger logo. Let's see if that is, uh, that will work. Change footprint, uh, six and a half. Yeah, that totally fits. Totally still fits. And I should replace it with the placeholder, with the null. But I'm done. Okay, let's do this. Uh, Shift Z, really quick. Yeah, that's looking better, I think. It's more proportional. I think I have to do something with the text too, that it has to mark uh, match the size. Uh, There we go, all three. Does it look better? Yeah, it definitely looks better. Uh, doo -doo -doo, by one bit squared, good, good, good. Now we can replace this with the placeholder. Change footprint. Null, 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 null logo, seven and a half. What? I don't have, oh. Wait, I don't have the newest version of this. Where is it coming from? Uh, where is this coming from? Preferences, manage footprint libraries, uh, project specific, and then I have a global one which comes. Hello? Oh, there. So this is the pretty, oh yeah, okay, good, 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 good. That's fine, no problem. I can do this. Uh, what? Keycat libs, pretty keycat libs, get pull. 
And let's go back. That should fix it. Yeah. Six and a half. Apply. Close. And then here, also null. Okay. There we go. Very nice. And now we have the placeholders, the anchors, as I call them. Yep, manufactured by null null. Very nice. Okay. I should probably enable the copper again. What was it diff? Uh, ta -ta -ta -ta, signal, F copper signal, in copper power, F silk, and then courtyards. <laughs> That's love, and yeah, I'm glad you like it. <laughs> uh, I'm glad you like it. I knew a lot of people would be very happy that I finally gave in. Uh, there we go. Why is the, oh, there, that's the problem. That's what I was confused about. <laughs> Yeah, it was it it turned out actually not being as as bad as I thought. It was a little bit of a puzzle. Um but we figured out a nice balanced uh routing here even though like you have to do this weird stubbing stuff uh because the how the pins are coming out of the FX2 chip versus other chips. So FTDI has the PNN swapped uh, so you can just go into the chip and then you have like a, just one loop on the front and one loop on the back and it works out. You can't do that uh, here. Uh, yeah, because you can, in the other configuration, you can go into the N and just loop in the back and then P can be looped in the front because uh, these pins go in the reverse order out of there. So, and then we figured out that we can uh, clean this up, which was very nice. That made me very happy. So this routing here is fairly clean and has a lot of space still. So uh, yeah, it turned out to be not as bad as I, well, I was not expecting it to be really bad, but um, it was, it was pretty good. So yeah. Um, Okay, so where were we? I was at so this is nice and clean here now. Um, uh, ta -ta -ta -ta. I have the no logos. Yeah, I wanted to commit this because I think we are done with that section. I wanted to see what was B silk is hidden now. Okay, fine. Fine. Why is it not saving? B silk? I did. What the? Now it's saving. That's super weird. Okay, anyway, so um, we have pretty much mostly what we did here. This timestamp changed because I moved it a tad. Great. For no reason, even though nothing changed, it still changed the timestamp. Why are you doing that, KiCad? It's like you see it didn't, like none of the parameters changed, but you are still touching it and changing the timestamp. Why? <laughs> Why? Uh, this is, I think, the part of the massaging of the boards where it's uh, getting rid of the timestamp stuff. 
uh, or like making placeholders for it, but yeah. Thanks, Hard Crash. Yeah, it's interesting. Yeah, I we are we are definitely not adding special controllers for here for the USB-C connector. So first of all, it is just USB 2.0, and the complexity of like I find it already pretty offensive how much additional parts uh, you have to use for USB-C. And I only agreed to put a USB-C connector on here because there is a USB 2.0 specific connector and it didn't require, it only required two pull-up resistors and that was it. Uh, anything else I think is pretty offensive how much uh, additional circuitry and chips USB-C requires um, to be able to use this. It's, it's, it's in my opinion crazy. Um, all the CC management chips and uh, uh, power management chips and like max, high, ultra high speed maxes. It's like 10 gigahertz max and stuff like that. It's just nuts. Yeah, I, I, I don't like it. And uh, the SWD over USB C connector. Uh, yeah. You can do that, as far as I understand. Yeah. Yeah, I... <laughs> Jared, yeah, welcome to the stream. So I did post exactly that uh, document uh, earlier, and I said I have to play with it. <laughs> so yeah, I, I, I will definitely look into this, how to modify the GitHub repository uh, so that it is cleaner. I The thing that I'm not 100% sure about yet, uh, how it works in GitHub, are the, this whole... Uh, pre-commit, post-commit hooks, where uh, how do I make it so that other users are using the same pre- and post-commit hooks and they are not being confused by them? I this is There's a little bit of a Git learning curve for me here. I have to figure out how that works properly. So it will be interesting. Yeah, I, I would like to uh, massage the Git a little bit better for um, handling the KiCad uh, projects a little bit better. On the other hand, like just purely from the, like it would make sense if KiCad developers put a little bit more intense effort into making the files not churn so hard to work with GitHub better. It's like the amount of churn, there was, the, it is a recurring topic where people are like, did you see that you are reorganizing all the uh, objects? And it's like, it's regressing over and over and over again, where um, a save like completely reorganizes the complete file. That does happen sometimes. You have like a version update and it's like, put some continuous integration tests in place so that this doesn't happen, that you catch it when it does this. But yeah. Uh, the yeah the the code base of KiCad is is problematic at times. Yeah. Oh, it did happen unstable. <laughs> it, it's KiCad is lacking a lot of continuous integration tests where and they started working on that. Um, uh, hard crash. It's single chip solutions. It's another chip that I have to put on the board. The fact that I need a single chip solution to add it, I think it is insane. Why? <laughs> Why? What the hell? What is this standard? It really makes me angry, to be honest. Why the hell do you make a new standard that requires me to spend additional few cents? It's not a big deal. It's just one chip. No problem. Just add this one chip that does everything. 
hell to that. <laughs> no, it's really obnoxious. <laughs> yeah, it's like the, the, the same fact with the like, um, microcontrollers. Not having the uh, high-speed USB Phi, why? For God's sake, put the damn Phi in those chips. There's like four options if you want the Phi for USB high-speed built in into the microcontroller. What the hell? <laughs> Come on, guys, get your grip. <laughs> mm. Anyways, okay. <laughs> You you managed to 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 make me say these things. Anyways, all right. So um, <laughs> what are we on about today? It's just the USB. Just uh, how the chip vendors handle it. It's like oh, just add this additional file or like now USB-C and just add this one chip solution that does all the management that cost five bucks or something. Well, maybe it costs like cents, but still all the USB-C connectors costing twice as much as a, as a decent micro USB connector. And then everyone being up in arms that I'm not willing to bend to the will of the masses to add USB-C to the Glasgow. And it's like, oh, come on. Uh, all right. Stay calm, Peter, stay calm. Check your pulse. <laughs> it could be way worse. A lot of things could be way worse. But they are still bad, and it doesn't mean we should just lay down and accept it, to be honest. Uh... Right. Yeah, that's that's my suspicion too, Jared, that the pop, a reason why the USB high-speed files are not added to microcontrollers very often is the fab requirement. So a yeah, cheap-ass microcontroller to have a, a four, 480 megabit uh, phi uh, is just expensive. Fair enough. But on the other hand, it's like, yeah, it's... At the end, as a user, it still annoys me. <laughs> yes, it is. It is, well, it is more than $80 board, too. And it's like, I, I'm fine adding that. It's just, um, I, I don't know. It, I am complaining about something that is not. I shouldn't be probably complaining about in a in a way, um, but yeah, I, I hear you. I hear you. Stop here bitching, Sandia. There you go. <laughs> Thanks, Jared. USB C check and replaces it with a micro. Yeah, yeah, yeah. <laughs> yeah. No, I did I did warn people where I'm like, okay, I will add it. It's so so at the end, this experience is not that terrible. So first of all, because this is not a terrible connector, because it's just a 2.0 connector. I, I'm repeating myself for the fifth time now, but it doesn't matter. Let's let's go down that line. Um so the I was I will test it out. I, w I want to see how it uh, assembles, how this board will look like. The routing on this is actually cleaner than on the micro USB connector, which is very surprising to me. But the main reason is because this uh, VBUS stuff is connected on the other side. So that's actually pretty cool. Um, and being able to just add the USB-C connector with not making this uh, pads completely insane, which the full 3.1 USB uh, is uh, um, is pretty notorious for, that uh, this section is very complex. Um, and only adding two pull-up resistors for the uh, CC, it was, it is okay. It is an okay level of requirement. 
beyond that, if you start uh, uh, adding more features, it's becoming very annoying. So um, I did, I did start looking into the USB 3.1 or 3 uh, for another project, and then like starting looking into all those muxes, all those like uh, um, uh, CC management chips, even like single chip solutions. The single chip solution at the time when I looked was costing like three times as much as four chip as the like multi chip solutions. It it's just USB C. Even though the standard was standardized quite a while ago, it's very much in its infancy. Um, like the chips available for consumer products and making it easy to integrate USB-C into your designs is still has a well, long way to go until it uh, it is actually reasonable. Um, the micro USB, I will, I will, I'm still keeping that door open if something shows up which I didn't consider uh, for this board where it's like, oh, well, we will not do that. The main thing that annoys me about USB-C and like especially doing it as part of the crowdfunding campaign is I have to source cables now. I have to source them USB cables. For anything else that uses micro USB, I can be pretty sure that 99% of the people, and I'm sure someone will scream in a minute that it's like, I don't have any micro USB cables in my household. Most people do have micro USB cables in their house because the standard was around for a long time. Yeah, yeah, I'm still hating on USB-C because I have to source cables for it. Because I know that most people that this will buy the uh, the uh, Glasgow with the USB-C cable uh, connector don't have USB-C cables at home. I'm pretty sure that most people that will get it will be like, well, now I have to buy a USB-C cable. So I have to source them now and I'm annoyed about this. <clears throat> Then can buy it themselves. Yeah, but they will now complain. It's like, but I don't have it, please. Where do I buy a USB-C cable? <clears throat> uh, God. <laughs> no, they don't. It's like a lot of people think, uh, not everyone is buying uh, phones with USB-C connectors on it. It's like there is a big market share that uses a completely proprietary connector. <laughs> um, all users are. Timon, you have a very positive, and I commend you for that, view of the, of the uh, community. Uh, but most c customers, um, yeah. <laughs> Jared, I had a very good teacher, my friend. <laughs> Anyways, yeah, uh, that's true, that's true. All right, let's stop it. All right, um, let's commit this. Did I commit this? Uh, rev C2. Um, uh, manufacturer M MFR uh, name and logo anchors. That's how I call them. Uh, so that was mainly what I did. I also fixed the clock AIF stuff, but that's fine. All right, so next. Um, I wanted to try to squeeze in some numbers in here. The annoying part here about adding numbers on the wrong side of the connector is people might think that it is to the ground. Ah, that is a good puzzle here. So how do we do this? So the, the reason it would be really nice. Come on, load, load um, to know what the pin pin numbers are on this connector from this side because we don't have space here 
unless we start moving parts really significantly around. Yeah, I I I'm I'm stopping to getting getting sniped with the whole cable and whatnot situation. I I'm not I'm making a roll. I'm not addressing it anymore. At least not in this stream. Next stream. <laughs> um, so uh, yeah, I'm trying to think. Can I move this stuff? So sync sync is nice to keep it the way it is. The B is an indicator. This is nice. We don't really have a space here. I don't, I could theoretically move the stuff, but I don't really have space to put legend on the top side of here. So that's tradition now. Okay, thank you, Bob. It, all right. It's a, it's a, it's a, this streams of, uh, <laughs> uh, meme or tradition now that I, that I'm ranting about USB, I guess. And I square C, don't forget I square C. <laughs> ah, the protocol wars of 2020. Oh my God, that sounds horrible. <clears throat> Yeah, I think, yeah, I will just add it. Let's see how this looks. Yeah, it has to be much smaller. Uh, how much space do we have here? How tall can it be? Nine. So let's, if we set it to point 0.9, still too big, right? So it has to be point 0.7. Oh, I should fix it in both directions, shouldn't I? Yeah, this will be sketchy at best. Come on, load it. This will be freaking tiny. <laughs> I'm not sure this is worth it. What we could do is like do some weird coding, like with bars or something on here. Maybe that is a way of doing this. Yeah, it's pretty much. The problem, the, the USB-C you need for the high-speed interfaces. You need this for five gigahertz. Uh, you need a five gigahertz rated connector and uh, micro USB doesn't have that. Well, there's the micro USB with this like side, side car thing, but yeah. But not for 10 gigahertz. Corona numbers? Corona numbers. What are corona numbers? Corner. Corner, rather. Corner. Okay. Number corner now. <laughs> Yeah, 100 watts. Yeah, that is that is cool. Yeah, the power supply part is definitely really cool improvement uh, on the USB-C. There are real advantages to this interface. I, don't get me wrong. It's just for, yeah, anyways. I, I promised I will not get, get into this anymore. I promised. <laughs> um, okay, so the alternative would be to do something. Let's see. Let's uh, prototype something on the silk screen. So I was thinking maybe create boxes, first of all, to delineate stuff. Let's 
something like that. And then uh, this one would be, the zero is, I think, still correct. And then the next one would be a one. And then the next one would be a two, but do it with uh, Roman numerals, something along those lines. That should be better readable. Oh, come on. Um, than uh, using actual um, Latin numbers. No, Latin? No, wrong. Is that? No, it's, uh, what is the alphabet? <laughs> God damn it. <laughs> yeah, and the voltage. Yeah, this doesn't look t too terrible. Arabic numbers, thank you. Yes, sir. <laughs> Arabic numbers. Do the numbering in a binary? Maybe. Hmm. Not sure. I'll... Yeah. It's binaries t would do do the job. Sure. I'm not sure this is the right solution. Anyways, this doesn't look bad. Let's continue this. Oh come on. I am just hoping this this is it should be just easily readable that's the that's the main point of this let me add the other dividers this will need require some polishing afterwards like this uh okay The power, this is what I'm concerned about because this is not indicating. I ha, My biggest problem is that this is ground and then you have signal, which should be okay ish. But if I do VIOB, I have to essentially say that it is both. So if I do control D, just a V here, will that do the job? Just V. But then it's then it is a five, right? Hmm. Yeah, that's I I definitely would love to do that. Uh, add um, a bunch of legends inside. Uh, so have a have a card that uh, the Glasgow comes with. I do want to do that. Two, let's try this and then this is three. Come on. There we go. That's a three. And then four. So what I did on the um, on the sleeves here, I can show you. This is basically inspired by this. So I did this. You have. This is pin one or pin zero. Pin zero doesn't have anything. Zero has nothing. Let me try to extract it just a second. There we go, there we go, there we go, there we go, there we go. All right, so. This is how I did it on the ends of the cable. 
So I have the bands for the first uh, five. So one, two, three, four, and then five is the big band at the end of it. So we could do something similar to this on uh, this. So it is inspired by numerals, but it's not exactly that. But yeah, it should be should be readable. So now four will be. Um, this is too far from each other. And then we need the. Oh, I should switch. Sorry, sorry, sorry about that. Uh, So, like this, that would be four. <laughs> I'm laughing because we could do it, or well, we can't do it in Octo. Can we? Because we don't really have like having more than four bars is uh, is annoying. What we could do though is have a uh, let's make it wider. This would be clearer than having a V for a five because then it will collide with this V. So we have V, zero, one, two, three, four, five, and then six and seven. <clears throat> Trying to stay here in the, between the, tr the lines here. And then try here. And this one is the last one. There we go. And this one will stay empty because it is the non-connected pins. Let's duplicate this and just Uh, put it here and then add a line next to it. Let's see how that looks. And then the last one would be like this. Oh, I can put it on both sides. That's cute. So this would be a five, this is a six, and a seven could have like two small lines on the sides. That would look pretty nice, I think. But yeah, let's, let's uh, just copy this. Alien technology, for sure. I'm fine with alien technology, if it's good. <laughs> Not if it is USB-C, ah, no. <laughs> Oh man. All right, so let's see. How does this look? Yeah, I think this needs more distance. Yeah, I should spread it more, I think. It's not terrible though. Yeah, does this work? These bars are interfering with the look, the divider bars. Why the cryptic bars? They are not cryptic, Timon. They are pretty clear. What are they? You can do it. You can sort out what they mean. <laughs> uh, they are better readable than numbers. That's what I'm thinking. 
uh, especially at this really tiny size. Yes, sure, but they are obvious what they mean, don't they? <laughs> Uh, yeah, I don't like the divider markers. I think these are just, they are distracting. I think it will look better like this. Let's see. Yeah, still not good. Let's see, if I replace it, the problem is that I have uh, that when they are really tiny, if I have just numbers here, they will be completely unreadable. Uh, so let me move them and put numbers here instead. And see how that looks. One. Two. Three. Four. Five. Six. And seven. Okay, so let's see how that looks. I I'm just expecting this not be uh, to not be readable when it is uh, on the silk screen because this will be very very tiny. <laughs> yeah, yeah, that's good. Yes, yeah, Stuart. Stuart, this is the, yeah. I, I like I like electronic puzzles. If it is also, with solder mask, it would be readable. I think solder mask will start peeling at these sizes. Um. So yeah, if I do it in a negative space of silk screen, that might be an option. Um, yeah, just a little bit concerned that this will peel on the edge, although it shouldn't. It shouldn't peel. Hmm. How uh, how does it look again? So they will be so they will be white. Uh, Let's see. So this, it will be white like this. The size of the font that I currently have. So how large is it compared to the labels? Might actually work out. Might actually be uh, work out. Definitely it's on the white. The black is, uh, has really good contrast. So it is very clear, readable text. So I think we might be, so this is the back here with the numbers. I think that looks good. I have a better version of HANA too uh, for the white um, whiteboard, just FYI. Just let me show you that really quick. Yeah, I will have to think about this still and uh, present the two different options to people. Um, 
Yeah, probably you're right that the numbers are, are easier to read than the my cryptic bar system. Um, we will see. Uh, the numbers. Okay, yeah, I wanted to look at HANA. Uh, so there's a replacement HANA version that I drew. Uh, ta -ta -ta, change footprint and no, no, HANA. Oh, wait, where is she? I did make a small negative version of her. What the hell happened? Yeah, I made a version that where I outlined her. Um, weird. Now I have to find it. That's not good. I put quite a lot of effort into fixing this to make a, a negative, uh, like an empty space version of Hannah. I have to find her now. Where did you end up, Hannah? It's maybe on my other laptop. I will have to see. Um, oh well, it's not not happening at the moment. Yeah, yeah, it is. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah I, I fixed this. This this does look wrong on the uh, white background, especially. So yeah, I will fix that. Yeah, I think I did it on my other laptop. Let me just open her really quick. Let me check really quick. Um, open recent, no. Glasgow there and then Glasgow and let's see Glasgow it's Glasgow Glasgow so much Glasgow Glasgow yes there is no no there is there it is okay I will show you here Wah. so I made a version man this monitor is dusty <laughs> All right, better. So yeah, I made a version of her that looks better. Um, then uh, Alt three, will that work? Can I see it? Anyways, whatever. You you get the you get the idea. So yeah, that should w look better definitely. So I will uh, add her. Just did it on my other laptop, that's why. <clears throat> and I don't have it on here. Okay, um, yeah, so uh, regarding the size, I probably need to, like this is, this, is the, this is the problem that we are fighting with. It's like, we, this is the space we are. This is just point, eight millimeters of space. I might remove that lower line to make more space so that it doesn't overlap. If we look under the microscope, this is, yeah, this is basically a microscope thing. See, this is the space we are working with here. And it's like as wide as my fingernail, more or less. On the edge of the connector, a sticker. We could print on the connector, maybe. There's uh, pad printing. The problem is then you want it on the correct side of the connector. So you want ground to be labeled on this side, and then you want the numbers on the other side, and there's the gap for the, for the tongue. So this is the side of the signals, and this is the side but then you also have to like tilt it and look at this. I'm not sure I like this. <sighs> yeah, I will squeeze the numbers in the corner here and then see how that how that looks on the next prototype probably. And I will probably just use the Arabic numbers instead of the Roman ones. 
um, even though the Romans would probably look cooler in a way. Um, at least I prefer them because they are different than normal. But yeah. Yeah, I think... Yeah, I will make a screenshot and post that in the Glasgow channel and ask what people think about this. Because I do agree that it would be very nice to have um, some information about which pin is which on the top side of the board. Mm, so, yeah. And then, yeah, the card, the card that the Glasgow will come with, this is something I have to start designing. I. But besides just the pinout of this, these connectors, I'm not sure what else. Well, right. So in cases where people would like to write their own Verilog for the board, then it would be nice to know which uh, ID pins. <laughs> yeah, so th th there's, there's plenty of information we can put on the, uh, on the board. Maybe we need to add some more information regarding the Glasgow framework itself, maybe commands and stuff on uh, on the card. So there's plenty of uh, stuff we can add on the hard copy card. Um, if you didn't see, I made a card like that for the one bitsy. Just let me get one of them for you. So this is this is what I made for uh, the the one bit C. So the one bit C got a card like this, uh, and then uh, on the back like this. So this is what we printed. So Glasgow would get a similar card to this. That's uh, the idea. Yeah, I have to. I have to design something. Man, more work. <laughs> Great. I'm not sure we we want to make the board bigger than it already is. Um, <clears throat> a one millimeter wider probably wouldn't hurt to make it just one millimeter wider. Well, I will. I will ask. I will ask what the what the team thinks. Because it's eighty millimeters long and forty nine millimeters wide. If we add one more millimeter on the sides, then we get half millimeter on each end, and then the legend would might fit. And it's a nice round number. Yeah, <laughs> fair enough. Um, yeah. Yeah, we will see. I'm not. I'm. I'm not sure yet. Um, but definitely, I will have to work on the legend here a little bit more. And um, yeah, the anchors are done. Uh, so we can go into here. Come on. Uh, and then. Mark this as done and this as done. Uh, I will need to, so I will figure out the marking on the side here. And then I will move on to make the, oh yeah. So for example, the square has to be empty. We should fix that while I'm already on here. Uh, yeah, but this is only on the black on white version. So this, this should be just an outline. Um, because for any normal serial number, um, this uh, works for white backgrounds. But yeah, I, I'm not sure even I need the serial number. Anyways, I have to think about these things. So serial number, we have to figure out. So I probably should add that. Um, Um, the um, serial no uh, box 
regarding uh, white silk screen, no solder stop, or keep out, or uh, and then um, add pin bank pin legend to the top side. Uh, ba -ba -bum, and yeah, so that's that's it for now. Okie dokes. All right, so that would be it for today. Um, let's wrap it up here. Um, thank you so much, everyone who joined. Uh, it was fun after everything. Uh, it's a good distraction for reality in a way um, and uh, we did some uh, uh, reasonable progress the most in interesting thing I think we get out of this is after two hours of poking around and talking about this uh, is uh, essentially uh, designing a good board uh, that it takes a lot of time and it's mostly just scratching your head what is necessary and what one can improve. Um, this is why I end up having a lot of iterations of words when I work on them. So this is uh, Glasgow Revision C2. So there was, someone asked here how many revisions were there. So there was Revision A, Revision B. I'm not sure how many revisions they got. Um, uh, of of those revisions, revision C uh, got uh, and there was the zero, the one, and the two. The zero was uh, the very first version had still some hardware bug. Uh, revision C one is the fully working, uh, fully functional version finally, and C two has most the MFG so, uh, this, or DFM improvements, so design from manufacturer. We also swapped the USB connector to USB-C. Um, and, uh, and yeah, so this is this revision and I'm sure there will be more. Um, getting, like for example, the icebreaker, um, I'm on revision E of the of the board. So it is there was 0 0.1, 0 0.2, A, 0 0.2 B, then 1.0 A, B, C, D, E. So like I didn't count it right. So I think it's like eight revisions um, of the icebreaker itself until I got to a point where I was pretty happy with it uh, and these are usually really small changes and improvements and additions so um, this uh, this should be the last prototype before we go into production with the Glasgow I hope um, so we I hope we can get it right oh one more thing I definitely need to do is replace the USB-C connector and make these pads round wrecked that's something I forgot completely so I should write this down. Um, there we go. I forgot about that. So that's something I need to do still. And yeah, otherwise that would be it for today. Um, as I said before, thank you so much everyone who joined and uh, Thank you for supporting this. Uh, Attic chip is an authentic, well, authentication. It's more to contain a certificate so you can prove that you have a genuine version made by a certain person and you deserve our support. So essentially the thinking is multiple people will make them and um, you don't want to make a May, so that was the original idea. It's like you don't want someone to buy or build one themselves and then ask someone else to replace it for them. So that's the crypto chip, the, the uh, cryptography chip for in the first place. 
I never, I never had people come to me and want something replaced that uh, they didn't buy from me. So, so far, the customer base was very honest about stuff that they were buying. So I didn't have a problem with that. But um, it's something worth thinking about, worth uh, sometimes protecting against. Um, I don't think Glasgow is in the realm. The people that are buying this kind of hardware are usually pretty honest. It's not a cheap kit in the first place, even if you build it yourself. So, um, so yeah. Anyways, um, you don't need to populate it on your own board. Yeah, no, you don't need to populate the attack if you build it yourself. Is the shield connected via ferrites? Um, it is connected, yes, it is connected via an RC filter, I think. Yeah, it's a resistor and, and capacitor. Oh, wow, I have to move this here. Um, yeah, it, it is, uh, it's not a ferrite. The ferrite is used for the VBUS filtering. Um, but yeah, there is an RC filter here, uh, which is, an alternative thing of doing. It's either you connect the shield with a fer fer ferrite or you have an RC filter. Um, yeah. All right. So again, thank you so much, everyone, uh, for being here. Um, stay uh, safe, stay good to each other. And uh, thank you so much for everyone who is supporting this. Uh, thank you. Uh, so uh, those that are subscribed on Twitch, uh, I thank you so much. Uh, there's uh, the store is uh, onebitsquared.com or DE for the European German slash German store. Uh, thank you everyone for who gets uh, hardware from there that makes these streams possible. Uh, there is also a Patreon that uh, if you want to um, drop in some money into the tip jar. Um, please uh, check that out. And uh, as always, I would like to give a shout out to a bunch of people that are in the shout out tier on uh, um, on, on Patreon. So <laughs> thank you so much, everyone. So that would be Jamin, uh, Aki Van Ness, Brennan Ashton, Ben Venick, Drew Fustini, Edward Borden, Go Jimmy Pai, Jeff Wang, um, Jordi Paki Rodriguez, Kelly, uh, Matthias Schmiedle, uh, Matthias Pritchett, uh, Mika Benovets, uh, Sean C, and Tom Kelly. So thank you so much, everyone, who is making these streams possible and supporting what we do here. Um, and yeah, as always, if you have been, thank you for watching. Bye.